from here, what I saw inside of the <laughs> Don't forget that. Steven Seagal is a polarizing figure in the martial arts community. This isn't a video hating on Steven Seagal. This is about taking a look at the validity of the technique being taught and in what context. So keep watching. I'm going to teach him how to punch in a way that's different. It will <laughs> go through the gloves and you won't be able to see it. And it's much, much, much more effective and can even be deadly. Deadly, deadly. So, <laughs> sorry, I've got to stop laughing. Invisible power. It is possible to punch or to develop power through the gloves. I wouldn't say it's deadly, but there is this idea where what you can do is you can actually contract when you hit. So when you punch, bang, you can contract. <laughs> To be quite frank with you, gloves are actually made to absorb impact. So if you think about it, that's the whole point. It absorbs a shock of a strike. Either way... Does he have to be filming now? <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Nice. <laughs> I think there's a very different scenario when you're talking about self-defense or a street fight. You've also got to consider what the person's doing with their other hand or whether they're trying to stop you with their other hand striking them. But he's going to try to cover his throat. He'll try to do this. So you have his eye. The reaction of actually hitting the throat, the trachea, and getting the person to drop the chin and then suddenly going into the eye, that's feasible. Punches tend to retract back. It's different if you're hand fighting and you're working in a clinch and then you manage to work to the outside of the arm and then you grab the arm and then you jab into the throat and then you hit with an elbow or you then go into the eye socket. That's different because what you're doing is you're fighting from a two hand clinch situation. But when you're dealing with punches where someone's throwing a punch, that punch retracts back very, very quickly. It's, it's a lot harder to be able to follow it and then grab hold and try to strike and get this type of reaction. If you look at my hands, you can see, you know, all of them have been punching for 50 years. So anything I hit you with is going to fucking work. My bones can't break. I mean, you're all giving him a lot of respect, aren't they? <laughs> His mate comes up. He's a full guy, really. It's a given, isn't it? Punch the liver, the spleen on the other side of the body, obviously the ribs. But it's back to this idea again of actually getting hold of a punching arm. Remember, the arm's retracting. Is it a fight stopper? Is it deadly? As Steven Seagal might make you think. Step on this if you can. Come in here if you can. But again, we're talking about a very fluid dynamic situation here. And if you're looking at competitive violence, which is what we're talking about, which is very different, if I'm going to apply this in a situation where I'm actually hand fighting, struggling, and then I can grab hold of the arm and hit underneath and hit underneath, and then come up and grab the head and elbow, that's much more applicable for a fighting scenario because it's closing the range, it's getting into clinch distance, and also as well as taking into account the person's got another arm to strike with. But we're talking about the difference between a application and theory here. So punch comes in, hits. I mean, a deflection with a forearm, perfectly feasible. You see it in boxing. As I said, very similar. You see this in Wing Chun as well. But it's just getting hold of the arm. When he comes here, and you're down here, step on this, you little bad You know, really hard to see. Okay, I'm sorry. See. Exactly. I see. 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 He doesn't want to play. <laughs> 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 I'm 
hungry. I'm even tired, bro. <laughs> when you are actually in a teaching environment and someone presses onto a point or what have you on your body, yeah, you do tend to jump. Some of it's psychosomatic because you're expecting to feel pain. The press, you feel pain. But it's very different when you're adrenalized. You're in a fight. You've had a bit to drink. Maybe more you're intoxicated you're on a substance whatever it is and then suddenly someone presses something it's, it's completely different remember fights are dynamic and you're far better off striking those major stopping points anywhere really that's actually available rather than looking for these sort of little nerve points especially on the body most northern hemisphere countries you wear winter coats it's not going to be applicable <laughs> <laughs> My friend, see, yeah. you angle, you, you, you can come this way to the eyes, come yeah. this way even to the head. You can do. Or you can come this way with the elbow. I wouldn't, okay, I wouldn't use the elbow. What do you see? Okay. By using the elbow, what you're doing is you're facing the second punch. People always punch in bunches. So there's not a major criticism of this, but one of the things you have to take account on is that when people punch, they punch one, two, three, they punch with rapid multiple punches. They don't just come in and punch one and stop. What they do is they tend to come in with a bunch. So if you're looking at parrying and deflecting with the arm and then grabbing that parry, which makes perfect sense, so assuming that they leave it forward, then they're going to follow up with a second punch. If you're going in with an elbow on the same side, you're going to get hit with that second punch because you, even if you're holding that arm up, that second punch, you're facing it. If you're going to use your elbow, you have to parry an elbow with the opposite arm because that takes your head away and actually gives you much more coverage and protection here when the next punch is coming across. So theoretically, that's a crazy thing to, to teach. And especially to such a high level guy as Alex here, I would not, I would not, it would, it would just be something I would not say to any of my guys. And they don't even compete at the UFC level. This one he should but, but well, you deal with a southpaw stance, right? So let's put the doesn't guys. matter. We'll, we'll take I, don't I don't care where he comes, how he comes. You know, I'm here, I got this. It's always standing on the foot fight, isn't it? Standing, stamping on the foot. He uses that quite a lot. I see the next one? If I start telling him, stand this way, stand right that way, he can't fight. Just like this. This comes here. The punch is here. This comes here. You see? This. Alex was thrown up right uppercut at that point. Come here, but go in. I mean, look, elbows is my thing. One of the things about elbows is that you actually want to hit with the last few inches here, basically, because that's the bone. So when you're actually striking with an elbow, you're cutting in and you're actually hitting with the actual... If you like, the last few inches, not the tip of the elbow, but the last few inches of it. And that's the sharp bit. That's what actually does the cutting. So anytime you turn your hand this way, it makes it a blunt weapon. You turn the hand this way and you relax the hand and you hack the elbow across, then what it does is it creates a, a sharp point that essentially is very painful. You catch someone across the temple, the side of the eye, you'll split that skin and you'll damage them. If you're looking at a competitive fight, that's a TKO. It's going to finish the fight because the guy's going to be bleeding into his eye. That's the sort of stuff that Stephen should be talking about, not basically elbowing the body. If you're a conditioned fighter, you're going to be used to taking punches to the body. Okay, let alone an elbow that's not going to be as effective. So you shouldn't be messing about with the elbows. You shouldn't be using the elbows to the head almost certainly. Pulling the hands down, elbowing across, elbowing in even. But Definitely not this. <laughs> yeah, so he's asking the, what I was saying. Is that right about the uppercut? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got a cool look, hasn't he? No, everyone's kicking like this. I like his beard, I'm jealous. I kick like this. You see the difference? You feel the difference? This is no good, this is perfect. No tongue, 
né? Foi mais de baixo um pouquinho, mais de baixo um pouquinho, vem direto. Aê! Só que agora, não, mais esticada a perna, na distância. Uma facada, né? Aí, ó. The reason why Anderson Silva and Leoda did knock them out is because they did what I told them. They don't lift the knee, they're not going like this. They did what he told them. So, you already bring you straight for the bar here. A razão que o Anderson conseguiu acertar no vídeo é isso. Ok. It is standard practice when you're doing a front teep or a straight thrusting kick or a front kick as they call it in lots of martial arts. You pull the toes back and you expose the balls of your toes. You do that for extra reach in the weapon, but it allows you to actually drive your hip forward. It gives you a better alignment between the point of the contact being the balls of the feet through to the knee to the hip. So it's essential that you do that. Kicking someone in the shin like that it's not as effective as you think because there's a higher risk of actually slipping off the shin bone. What you do essentially is you turn a foot at a 45 degree angle and you stamp across onto the shin or you kick across onto the shin or onto the knee. What would work though is if you stamped on the foot. You're close enough in clinch fighting to start stamping on the toes, but not kicking the leg like that. Já saiu já, mano. Então ele, quando ele já sai, ele estica aí, ó. Not this way. Mas não mal aí, não ali. Isso. Yeah, again, pretty much standard practice. And quite frankly, he already knows this. He's just... He's been humble enough to listen. You've got to give him so much respect. He knows this. Not a... 